So today we'll <clears throat> look at the rem remaining part of IPsec protocol. Okay, and we'll look at tunnel mode. Transport mode we have already done. And then we'll change uh, study key exchange protocol. Okay, all right. So this is what we have completed in the last lecture. And this is what we'll complete today. And feel free to ask questions. Okay. What is the objective of doing all that? We are on internet, right? Okay, so we cannot provide physical security of any kind, right? So you are sitting here somewhere in the world and there is a machine here or server. And then you are using your whatever laptop, etc. Now there is your packets you are creating your applications running whatever like webex we are running okay and that is that has created tcp session okay and then tcp packets are going over ip okay so the tcp contents will come here and ip will put its own headers here which is essentially you you would have looked at it source address destination address these are two main uh, fields right so this is kind of header or metadata okay now your packets are going all throughout in the routers and you don't know where this router is it could be in china or some north korea also right depending on the routing algorithm whoever advertises least cost path to destination okay uh, not one particular destination but in general area for example if the destination is in new york uh, then you know the, all the routers will advertise you know pass to New York and whatever or this particular set of IP address and then whoever advertises slowest will be accepted and somebody in between say maybe ROG router in China can advertise least cost to New York then everything has got to go through rather than going to normal route and go through Chinese router. I, assuming that this is a normal route or actual least cost route. Okay. Now, question is that you are sending your IP packets and you have done not done any security at TCP and application layer, then all your packets are visible to everybody else. Okay. In the in in, in these routers or somebody connected to these routers. Okay. Now, question is how do you want to protect it? So there's a problem, right? First thing first is that if everything here in your IP packet is plain, this you are using plain text. Okay, or simple zeros one which can be coded into whatever, right? Plain text, right? And your source address and destination address, destination address and source address are all visible in plain then Mallory or anybody in between can manipulate this part as well as this part. Okay. Now the question is that how do you want to protect it? So this problem we are trying to solve in IPsec. So what all we can do from whatever we have learned everything so far so that you can design your own IPsec. You can say that look I want confidentiality. I don't, I'm not so concerned about integrity. I want confidentiality. Then you are going to encrypt this. Okay. Obviously, this is large in size, or there will be multiple packets. You know, if it's a TCP session. Okay, then uh, you may want, you cannot do asymmetric key encryption like RSA. All you can do is symmetric key encryption. As basically what you are going to use, you, you know, uh, multiple protocols there, right? Okay, uh, you can use any one of that. All right, so that's, so encryption, but in order to do symmetric key encryption, you will have to, both hands should have, same key okay shared key so there must be some mechanism for shared key also right 
key sharing, right? So you are going to use here Diffie-Hellman. Okay, that's the simplest way of doing shared key, creating, generating shared, or you can do RSA also. Okay, but anyway, so the protocol uses, uh, gives options, many options, and one of that is Diffie-Hellman, which is the most popular. There's one problem you have solved, but in order to do all that, you have to do negotiation between two end parties. Because both this machine and this one and the, your laptop can have different capabilities. Okay, so negotiation of algorithm and negotiation of different parameters and so on and so forth has got to be done. You know, because you have to discuss, you are going to use a symmetric connection, DES, AES, or 3DES, whatever. Okay, all these algorithms and then the key size and how to generate keys, key generation, etc., has got to be, or some, or some others. I'm not sure whether key generation part will be discussed, maybe part of strand. All these are negotiated. Now, if uh, you want only authentication, so you're not so concerned about confidentiality, but you are more about the authentication or integrity, then you are going to use different kind of mechanism. Or you may want confidentiality plus authentication then you are going to use different kind of mechanism. Now, when you are doing end-to-end, -end, then of course the choices are different. And when you say, I have a gateway router here, similarly, there's gateway router here, and I am not going to do, my laptop is incapable of doing anything. I will generate just plain IP packet, then let this router here, or the gateway here, communicate with the end gateway here, toward the recipient side and create some kind of confidential integrity that we call a tunnel. Okay, when we do end-to-end, -end, we call it, uh, we, we use header called AH header. All right, okay, when end-to-end -end is, to, okay. All right, so uh, the tunnel, note that tunneling is done always between gateway to gateway. Okay, all right, okay. And then transport, when we use word transport in connection with that, a, of course, AH we have not discussed. So the, so when, when we do transport, it is always end to end. So with this idea, with this basic knowledge, and the, what I have discussed is based on our previous knowledge, right? We are going to, look at this particular protocol. When we say protocol, it means that both end are going to use similar state, same state machine. So each and every bit that is transmitted from one end must be interpreted exactly in the same way at the other end. Okay, so whoever has written software uh, for you know TCP IP here and here must software will work exactly the same, not in a bit difference in a bit interpretation of single bit. Okay, all right. So now we can see that IPsec has two parts. First is internet key exchange, where we, you know, two entities mutually authenticate themselves, establish session key, okay, and then create various security association that we'll study today. Okay, and it basically, uh, un security association is nothing but a logical connection or understanding between two endpoints on the use of cryptos, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay, such that if you are using uh, AES at source end, the recipient should know that we are going to use the uh, same protocol AES at, for decryption and so on, right? Okay. And then once, uh, channel established, then traffic processing can happen or both entities can send traffic. Okay, note that IP by itself, 
you know ip means that you are sending these packets independently right this header and this payload okay this is connectionless each packet is independent and the source and destinations are not keeping track of uh, destination is not keeping track of what has received based on header it will be delivered to appropriate party when at recipient but when we do ipsec there has got to be state maintained at source destination and source some state is stored what is being sent and uh, what is the number and so on and so forth then we can say although ip is connectionless but but ipsec is connection oriented because both entities are not working independently they are uh, they are just keeping track for example your mom sends five laddu packets okay and these laddu packets go independently for postal office it these are independent ones right but internally before putting uh, these laddus into another packet bigger packet for courier guys she is marking 1 2 3 4 5 and changing the cover of the each uh, packet right basically encryption and then then internally she you will understand what is 1 2 3 4 5 if five packets are to be received but all this is going inside ip so ip all the routers in between or postal office in between will not know what exactly uh, that there is a ipsec happening inside right so so ipsec because keeping state information then it is connection oriented okay then we have seen two mechanisms authenticate only and then encryption with authentication and between end to end machines and then gateway to gateway right so these are the choices and accordingly we have protocols here with authentication header only in transport mode which is end to end between one machine to another machine okay and tunnel mode is that it's a between two gateways you create a tunnel like your north campus and south campus will have a tunnel which goes over public cloud or or internet okay all right so what we are discussing is we are not discussing this what we have said is that we will discuss esp header which provides confidentiality plus authentication or confidentiality only okay all right so and both we had discussed this on tunnel mode transport mode we have already discussed in last class today we will discuss tunnel mode so this is this was the transport mode end to end okay and this is minimal work okay all you have done is put a shim between header and the payload or a small uh, small information piece of information and then attach tailors and then you can you can provide both confidentiality and integrity because you know you have to have some information about confidentiality that you are you know what are you some some information right that for example says that recipient knows what is to be done okay because recipient is not receiving information only from you but maybe from 100 other sources so there must be some way to indicate and send and when we are doing integrity check then corresponding uh, you know mac value etc has got to also go with the packet such that the recipient now based on the key received can do the checks so now we are going to use learn about transport mode which is between two gateways we are creating a tunnel okay so tunnel mode provides protection to entire packet now in ah mode sorry transport mode we have seen we have looked at the ip this ip packet original ip packet then what we have done we have split this into header part and then in between we have inserted something which is which is shim okay and then this part comes here with some extra things okay some tailor etc etc okay so this this was the mechanism but here in esp mode or the tunnel mode 
what are we doing is that this taking this IP packet and completely doing encryption of this. Now we cannot send this because this header is also encrypted. So now we are putting this inside another IP packet. Okay, and changing source address and destination address. Now note that this is between, now the source address becomes address of this gateway and destination becomes address of this gateway. So now when destination receives this encrypted packet, it will decrypt because now the understanding is between these two about what crypto are to be used and what are the parameters. So this destination gateway can decrypt it and send it to local area network. Okay, any question? I hope you are able to understand at least something. Okay, so now let's look at the tunnel mode. So this is defined, we have already discussed this. This is public internet. Okay, and then this is the gateway. This is your local area network. Okay, this is the gateway. Of course, gateway will be part of at the interface of local area network. Or we can call this also firewall, firewall gateway. And it creates a tunnel with another firewall gateway. So when you send a packet from here, it is ordinary IP packet. And when it comes here, it gets inside another IP packet. So this is the original IP packet and goes on another IP packet. This is completely encrypted and comes to this point where this gateway will remove the original IP packet and send it to local area network. So it's called tunnel mode. Okay. Again, there are two modes in tunnel, uh, ESP and uh, AH, I think. Just a minute. Wow. Okay, anyway. Okay, all right, right. The AHA, anyway, we are not discussing, so I will skip. So, all right. So, we are discussing only tunnel mode ESP and transport mode ESP, we have already discussed. All right. Okay. So, this is another view. We are creating tunnel gateway to gateway this is internet where there can be any kind of worms or uh, or malicious software in the router itself and we have to protect ourselves so what this gateway does is it creates a tunnel creating a tunnel means actually it's doing nothing but encryption and authentication mechanism so it will put take this original packet here and put it inside another packet ip packet so this packet becomes, so this is outer packet. So this is the new header and trailer. Okay, like information here and, and this packet comes here. Okay, all right. So this is the mechanism. So you can see the source destination remains the same here in the, because it's original packet. And then we can see uh, the source here becomes this one for the outer packet because now this is the source. So 68.36.210.57 is source and destination is IP address of this one. There's a 120, whatever, 128.6.4.2. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, this is right. This source, this destination. Okay, all right. The same thing. Alice is sending to Bob. There is no security here. There is no security for Bob because both are inside local area network and Alice machine cannot do IPsec. So now this is a bit left it to uh, two firewalls should provide security. And this is the default mode. Okay. This is another uh, diagram. So Alice sends a packet P1 to Bob and it goes to a gateway. Gateway does this tunneling essentially encrypting this and changes the recipient address to gateway address to source address become its own address and this packet is taken out this p1 is taken out and delivered to bob okay 
all right so now is a firewall to firewall traffic entire ip packet is encapsulated into ipsec and ip header is not visible which ip header original ip header this ip header okay oh, okay all right this ip header is not visible to any of the routers because they, something that's visible is this one. Okay, like your mom's sweet packet. Okay, uh, there's a packet. Okay, goes inside another box. Okay, whatever here, yeah. I can't draw it properly. It goes inside another box. And that, so now this box, outer box, she will, uh, the post office will write or gateway will write I, that post office or courier office address, source address. And, you know, for example, it could be from Delhi gateway to Mandi gateway. So, th so this outer packet will travel to Mandi securely. That's it. And there it's taken out, this outer packet is taken out, inside packet will be visible now, and that will be delivered to you. So that's a very simple mechanism, right? Put IP packet inside another IP packet and encrypt the inside in inner IP packet. Outer IP packet source and destination address will be visible because, you know, uh, because without that packet cannot travel, right? So that's all. Packet reaches to the other end. So now you can see here what is being done. So this is original IP packet uh, payload, which comes from maybe TCP, and this is original IP header. And then we attach to this a trailer. Okay, trailer will have padding and next header. We have discussed these points in when we discuss H. And all these things are encrypted. Something that is shown in green is encrypted. Okay. Now, how will it be decrypted? Because the destination gateway knows what, is, what are the description keys based on this index. Okay. This index is a logical relationship between the two entities. Okay. So, destination gateway knows for this number what will be uh, what uh, encryption algorithm would have used so corresponding decryption algorithm will be used by destination gateway okay all right and then something that is here between this point and this point all this part is authenticated all right okay Right, so this is how it is done. Any question? And to this new IP header is there, where source address is gateway's address and destination is a destination gateway address. Okay, all right. So, Okay, any question? Authentication is using Mac. All right. Okay, all right. So this is uh, the same thing. Uh, that we have discussed earlier. So MAC in ESP authentication field will be HMAC, MD5 or HMAC shop. Okay, all right. So basically what we are doing, this is a repeat. We are creating a tunnel 
when we say word tunnel, it means that we are encrypting all the packets that are going and also doing authentication if, if required, okay, if there is a requirement, right? So we can see that the same thing that we discussed earlier, this original IP packet, this original IP packet that's coming from source and that's being encrypted, then authentication uh, is done, then authentication data will come here. Okay, and then ES and then header is attached here, which will tell destination what logical connection it belongs to, and then new IP header is added and then sent. Now Mallory in between gets this. Mallory in between gets this. What can she interpret? All that is visible in plain text is this one. Okay, she doesn't even know that this part is encrypted or this IPsec packet. Okay. Of course, she can see, uh, you know, something like this part also she can see and this part she can see because these are only authenticated. So she can see uh, RSI, uh, some number. And then she can also see uh, sequence number. Can she interpret something from that? Very unlikely because TCP numbers are also numbered like this. Can she know, if she, if she has no way to know that is IPsec and she has no way to know that this is encrypted. When we encrypt something again, it's same as zeros and ones, right? One set of zeros and one become other set of zeros and ones. Okay, all right. So this is, this gives a detail that this is the original IP packet. This is the header. This part is uh, okay. So header. So this part is header, and this part is payload, which is actually getting TCP packet. So basically, this is TCP packet. Okay, and we have to transform this into I, um, IPsec packet. So only thing we change here is that now. Destination should know this is not the ordinary IP packet, but IPsec packet. So we here put a code in type field. This is a type field, protocol type field, as corresponding to IPsec, which is ESP. Okay. All right. That's it. And then here, somewhere or other, we have to tell the destination that what is inside here in the actual payload. Then we, we put here as uh, TCP. Next product field, this field says this is a TCP. All right. Okay, now note that authentication is always optional. So ESP we can do only with encryption or we can do it with encryption plus uh, authentication. So in case authentication is done, then this authentication data is also this one will come. Okay. So on receiving, what is to be done? Verify sequence number, verify integrity. Once it receives, recipient receives this one, based on authentication data, it will verify integrity. Okay, and based if integrity is matched, then it's, uh, if, if there's a problem, packet will be discarded. Otherwise, if it's, everything is okay, it will be decrypted. Okay, note that ESP header, is not encrypted, okay, but it's authenticated. Okay, it contains SPI and sequence number. Okay, however, ESP trailer is encrypted, right? The one here or one here. This is encrypted. So there is nothing in the packet that says the packet is encrypted, right? So Mallory cannot interpret anything. Okay. Now this is another view of the same thing when we receive data from app application and application and then it has got to go over TCP. So this will be put inside TCP header, TCP packet. 
and then this TCP packet will go into IP in the normal way. So TCP data becomes this TCP packet becomes payload here for IP. Now it has got to IP has to go over IPsec. Now this is IPsec here. So what we do is that we uh, uh, take this as it is. Okay. Okay, and then we uh, do encryption and authentication and attach these fields uh, like here, trailer, etc. Okay, uh, and then attach a new header and then send it. Okay, all right. So note that uh, there are two fields here ESP trailer and corresponding authentication similar to. Uh, this is a trailer and authentic. This is trailer and this is the authentication. Okay. Same thing is shown here. Any question? It's a monologue, right? <clears throat> Are you able to understand it? Archita ji? Yes, sir. Kya samanj mein hai? Kuch to batayye. Anything? Okay, I hope you, if you don't understand it, please get back to me. I will repeat this n number of times. Okay, now next part. We have used here word security association. Okay, what is it? It's a relationship between Two entities that I am sending packet using some encryption method, and you have to decrypt it using similar encryption, uh, same encryption method, and there is a key size, etc. And then, that, so basically, logical connection will be formed from between two entities. Now, we, if we talk of end-to-end, -end, okay, then transport mode. Then there's an entity, there's a relationship between the two endpoints. And if it's a gateway to gateway, it's a relationship between two gateways, right? Okay. So what we are now, this is again, okay, just, just look at very top view, then we'll get into details. Now, in order to do all this, okay, now nobody is sitting manually to do this, right? That you know your machine is sending IP packet, machine will prompt you what kind of encryption mechanism is to be used and so on and so forth. It's not. Okay, so everything has got to happen automatically. Okay, so now we need certain databases with, and there has got to be policy. Suppose my packet is going to a particular server, say amazon.com and I'm doing some transactions, then I may want security. If it is going to some, some other site, Okay, then it may not require security. When it my packet is inside the network itself, then I may not require security. Okay, so there has got to be some secure some policies. Okay, when when gateway is getting a packet from a particular node whose destination IP address something, it may decide there's no need to provide IPsec. It can go over and normally. Okay without encryption, etc. Now, if higher end wants to encrypt in that case, then they can do it. Okay, but IPsec level, we don't need. So all this comes in security policy database, which we call it SPD, this one, okay? And then based on this policies, you know, between two IP addresses, then security association can be formed between the two entities, right? Okay, all right. Uh, 
it's because it's coming from a particular IP address and going to a particular IP address. Okay, with so source is important, destination is also important, and uh, it has the packets have to be secured. Then we will have to define what kind of encryption mechanism, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are to be used, and what are the keys that have that is to be generated and kept somewhere, right? Okay. And then, of course, all this is done. Exchange between two entities is done. That's creation of keys, etc., is done by Internet Key Exchange. So, security association is defined as when an IPsec packet, whether AH or uh, ESP, we'll consider only ESP, arrives at the interface, when arrives at the destination interface. How does it know which set of parameters key algorithm policies are to be used? It just receives a packet. It may not even, it may uh, not even know it's ordinary IP packet or uh, IPsec packet, right? So, and then if it's IPsec packet, it has to, some decryption algorithm is so what is that decryption algorithm? What is the key size, et cetera, et cetera, and what key is to be used for decryption? Right. Okay, so the keys are to be set right in the beginning. Okay, only then it can be decrypted. And so all these comes in security association, right? So here between gateway router R1, so here we are assuming tunnel mode between gateway R1 and gateway R2, the security association is formed. Okay, now this gateway may be connect, may form another security association with some other gateway. Okay, so now let's assume this is North Campus, this is South Campus. In between that, this kind of security association is formed. Okay, what is that security association define? 32-bit identifier, which is index. Okay, original IP interface, destination interface, this IP address, the other IP address, and type of encryption used. Okay, and also it has to define encryption. Basically, security, what we are trying to say is security association must have this information, right? The IP address of source, IP address of the destination, what kind of encryption uh, you are using, algorithm using, what is the encryption key? Okay, now where does encryption key comes from? It means that there must be some mechanism to create encryption key earlier, okay? Type of integrity check, whether HMAC or MD5, authentication keys, and what kind of protocol we are using, ESP or AH, and what is the lifetime of the association? Okay, because association always has got to have some lifetime. Between North Campus and South Campus, your lifetime could be a few days. Okay, all right. So when router R1 in North Campus, for example, needs to construct IPsec datagram for SA, it accesses the state information to determine how it should authenticate and encrypt the datagram. So this once this relationship is formed, a new packet comes, then this gateway has to determine how to encrypt this or authenticate, do authentication related calculations, right? So R2 maintains the same information for this security association and will use this information to authenticate and decrypt. Okay, all right. So we have following element security association, which is one way relationship between sender and receiver defined by IPsec parameters, security association database, security parameter index and security policy databases. Okay, all right. So this, these are each connected to each uh, one another, right? Okay, please go through this. Now, what we do here is that Okay. 
This gives the details of what is security association and what does it do. Please go through this. There's nothing. We have discussed all these points. Okay. So SPI, which is a relationship and which defines unique index, okay, in database is included in the outgoing packet. So receiver or receiving gateway, when it receives it, it can unprocess. Okay, or we could uh, basically decrypt the packet, etc., etc. Right? Okay, and this gives originally agreement. Yes. Okay, please go through this exactly same thing. Okay, these things we have already discussed. So this same diagram that we have seen earlier. Okay. Okay. A security policy database has a lot of policies. It's defined by a set of IPs and upper layer protocol fields called selectors. Okay. Okay. So, for example, security policy database, this now we are using transport mode between A and B. Security policy database will define between A and B if packet is going from A to B, then you can use any protocol. Okay, you can use any port and however you will have to use AH, only authentication, okay. Now, from here, the packet, once packet system knows that all these things are to be done, then the packet will go to security association database where it will know what exactly is to be done and accordingly it packet will process. For example, from A to B, use AS protocol. It means that now you have to do only authentication and in that relationship number is 12, SPI is 12 and uh, you have to do authentication using HMAC MD5 key. Okay, so this key will be available here. Okay, so now, now this gives only partial picture. So full picture you can get elsewhere. Okay, uh, basically if you go through uh, uh, details in the book or so on, right? Similarly in tunnel mode, we can say that when it, this is security, Policy database. Okay, when something is going A to B, now A is in the local area network, B is another local area network. Okay, when is going A subnet to B subnet, okay, or A within a subnet to B within a subnet, you can use any protocol, you can use any port. However, you will have to use ESP with 3DS symmetric encryption and the destination is this one. This will be in policies. Okay, when one net to another net is going to use this encryption, but details of relationship that is formed using other protocol, which is internet key exchange protocol, will fill in this data in this table, security policy, security association database, We'll say when we're going to A subnet to B subnet, use uh, encryption ESP with SPI. This relationship is number 14, such that now destination will know what kind of parameters are to be used. And then there will be key here. Who gives this key? IKE. When internet key exchange is executed, then this database will be filled in. So first step would be, of course, in any uh, IPsec will be kind of IKE, okay? And once IKE is done, then all keys are formed, et cetera, et cetera. And then this is done when actual packet transfer happens, okay? You can see details here, security policy database, okay? The simple <clears throat> protocol is that when packet comes, Okay, this is for what? Okay. Okay, when packet comes, 
when outbound packet your your machine has generated packet it comes to for example gateway okay search policy database if match found determine the policy okay what kind of algorithm is to be used 3des or whatever okay and then it may decide to protect or not protect if it's very ordinary packet then or or if there is something wrong then it can be discarded okay if it's to be protected then search security association security association will define protocol say des key what is the key that we are going to use what is key for encryption key for authentication etc etc right and then process this match found then process it and send it if it is ordinary packet then don't do ipsec and then send just forward it right so the flow is as follows for ip outbound packet a packet comes it goes to security policy database then from that we can find out uh, whether what kind of uh, policy is to be used then uh, then here we can find out security spi etc and other parameters and keys etc and we process the packet okay so we process the packet and send it to b okay all right inbound packet same process is used okay input packet comes find out is ordinary packet ordinary packet then send it uh, just just deliver it without doing anything okay uh, and if it's a uh, if it's ipsec packet then security association database match found process it decrypt it and you know to uh, authentication check and then deliver it okay similar uh, very similar flow okay and this is uh, for inbound packet what is to be done okay just another few minutes about ike now ike has very important role it basically establish relationship between two basically it establish security association between two endpoints right two gateway for example it creates security association it means that now it has, if it's encryption and authentication, then it has set of keys are to be generated by this, right? Okay, so now we can do it manually, which is very, com consum uh, very time consuming. For example, if it is only to be done once between North Campus, South Campus, then your guys can do it. Okay, but you, then large number of gateways your campus to be connected it has got to be done automatically, right? Okay, so automatically is done using this protocol. Okay, it has two phases. First, establish IKE security association. Basically, you know now IKE between two gateways will negotiate on various algorithms and parameters. Now this, if this is done over open channel, then everything will fail because Mallory will know everything, right? So first thing first is that establish a security association for this over which other set of keys can be generated, okay? And this is called IKE SA. First create IKE SA and based from that, you can create multiple security associations, okay? All right, so phase one is uh, creates IKESA, and second phase is generate keys for various various security associations. If it's just one, then create one. If there are a number of users from North Campus connect, trying to go to uh, somewhere else, for example, then create multiple security associations. Okay, all right, so the same thing is depicted here, so we'll not go into it. Okay, so first is that creates IK security association. And once it is formed, then you can create any number of channels. Now, please look at it only at the top level. We are not going to get into details because it will take another two lectures. If you want, you can go through the book. Okay, all right. So what we have said today is uh, we have completed discussion IPsec. 
we use ipsec when security is to be provided at ip level now it this mechanism is used mainly for vpns virtual private networks in fact you can ask your you can see what kind of vpn you're using in your campus and then try to get details go to the vendor site and then see what kind of method is using is it using ipsec of course there are other methods also okay so ipsec is most common now this is used only when so or this is used when we don't know whether you know of the higher level there is a tcp or application level, any security mechanism is being used okay now does it mean that on top of that tcp cannot use its own security mechanism no tcp can also use and application can also use right but now you are certain that ip is providing some basic security mechanism even if application doesn't use any security mechanism it will work okay as we discussed it works in tunnel mode between gateway and gateway or it can work in transport mode wherein uh, it can be machine connected the end to machine connected the end so basically transport mode is this and uh, sorry uh, tunnel mode is this and transport mode is end to end it provides approaches of confidential integrity and is based on internet key exchange protocol ike which we are not discuss in detail but is essentially to establish security association between endpoints okay all right okay any question see i think you you would have got some idea okay the whole is 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 extremely difficult to 